What is happening folks? Welcome back to Hunting with Tripler. Even though we are a few weeks into 2022, I'd like to take you back in time and show you my five best pickups and my five worst deals from 2021. We also have to see where we landed on my $60,000 goal for the second half of last year. And though I've taken a little bit of time off, <laughs> let's talk about some things we're adding for this next year. Stick around folks. I collect so many things, would you like? To share this journey with me, I will show you the prizes I got today. So come along with me, come along with me, with me, me and join the chase. chase. Yeah. So some of you might be wondering why I've taken such a long break and part of it is because my day job has been very busy and I owe my time first and foremost to that. Second is time with my family, especially over the holidays I really wanted to be present and not overdo it with respect to making YouTube videos, making content. Uh, the other part of it is that I've been doing reselling and a lot of the reselling has been great. It was a really good year and if you guys want to see me put out a video talking about what I made this last year in totality, I'm happy to do that. I've been doing that basically for the second half of the year so I'm happy to continue to do that for you guys if that's of interest to you but that being said it's time to get back into content creating because it's something that I absolutely love I like making content I've grown the channel over a thousand subscribers this last year I'm appreciative to all of you who come and watch my channel watch the videos I make there's definitely going to be more to come and with that let's get into the show this is how we're gonna break it down we'll start with number five go all the way to number one and essentially number one being the best pickup or the worst loss that I've had of the year so number five best pickup comes from a brand that I didn't know anything about and for those of you who are resellers You're gonna love this one for those of you who like more of the nostalgia This really doesn't hit home for you. I know that however my state sale lady basically told me hey There's not a lot of stuff here that you like to pick up But I went anyway, and I am glad that I did because this brand Mealy is a vacuum brand that apparently goes for insane money. I paid $40 for a vacuum that to me kind of looked interesting. And even though I looked up the comps, they were hovering around $200. It wasn't until about a month or two later when I was ready to go list that item. Turns out that item was worth six to 700. And when I finally did list it, I sold it within three days and I sold it for just about 800. It was such a great value and such a great score and considering how much I paid for it, it's one of those items that you won't find very often even though maybe for from time to time, you might see one in a thrift store or an estate sale. I guess keep your eye out for something like this because even when you're surprised, it's always nice to be surprised in such a way where you're making a ridiculous amount of money. Now my fifth worst deal or pickup of the year comes courtesy of a storage locker that I got here in Long Beach, California. Now this storage locker came with a story. Apparently the entire facility was originally an insane asylum. Now of course we don't really use that nomenclature anymore and we've come a long way with mental health facilities. It's interesting to note though that when you hear a sane asylum you associate it with horror films and it really was the type of facility that was kind of horrific. Not only because I didn't really get anything out of the locker, paid about $200 for it. I also found a family of rats. Oh God, no, there's a mouse. Oh God. Nestled in the items I was picking up. So not only did I not make any of my money back, I also had to go through the process of cleaning up rat feces and getting rid of rats. So if you're gonna buy storage lockers, there's the possibility that you're gonna have to clean up this kind of stuff. And though I wanted to put this one much higher in terms of monetary value, I didn't lose a whole lot, but it really sucked. Just in general, really, really bad deal. Three of these pickups that I have on the best pickup list actually comes from one seller. And this guy was such an awesome guy, I couldn't even pay him more. He wouldn't take my money and he was really just happy to get rid of stuff. And he had no sentimental attachment to it. Of course, I did in some respects. Some items went into a collection, the others I was happy to resell. But this particular episode that I put out actually flew way under the radar and didn't get a lot of views. And that being said, I'm gonna give you a nice recap of what I got here. I'm trying to remember exactly how much I paid for it, but I believe I was trying to offer him around two or three hundred dollars for everything and he absolutely said no. I think he wanted like 40 bucks for it and I was like, 
no, 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 that's not gonna happen. I kept trying to get him up to a number that I felt was even somewhat in the realm of reasonable, but he just wasn't having it. And so I think in the end, I paid around 100, 150 bucks for it. I know many of you out there are probably gonna look at that and go, you are a terrible person. I just couldn't get him to take more money. But this lot came with comics, it came with sports cards, it came with Pokemon inbox games. This one had just about everything. And the total value of this was well over $1,000. It's hard not to wanna to flip items like this or add some of these pieces to your collection because all of this stuff is a part of my childhood, it's a part of your childhood. My fourth worst pickup of the year actually turned out to be one where I thought I was going to double up, but the amount of work I put into this particular lot and considering how much of this I've actually sold so far, I would say this goes down as one of those where even if I'm in the profit zone, the amount of time that I've spent on it makes it totally not worth it. This was an episode here where I'd bought something from a local seller who has a lot of video game inventory but he never cleans any of the games. The systems always need a little bit of work and in the end, it's so much volume that you have to consider how many of these items are you listing individually versus how many you're putting into lots. And a lot of these I had to sell individually just to get my money back. But considering how much time, which was hours of work, I would say this turned out to be less than $10 an hour in value for me, probably closer to five. And I have to say when I'm in that area of profit, it's totally not worth it. And this is definitely one I regret. Now somewhere in 2020, and I don't remember when it was, but it was Phoenix Resale, it was Chase after the right price, and I'm sure there were others who were out there flipping switch lights for game collections, and it started to become a thing. I don't think I really got into it. I'm sure I did some in 2020, but this one happened in early 2021. And when the gentleman reached out to me, originally I kind of saw what he was sending to me and it really didn't seem like it was going to be a great deal. So this actually ends up being deal number one with a guy that I made a lot of great deals with. And this was for a lot of boxed N64 games, a whole lot of other items. It turned out to be thousands of dollars worth of inventory for what he wanted, which was a Switch Lite that of course I upgraded. And even when he was giving me all this stuff, later on I ended up giving him more money for it, but it just, it just didn't seem real to me that deals like this were possible. But when you're looking across the spectrum of all the box games that I got here, all of the PS2 games, I mean, it was just such a beautiful lot. This started things off. This was my third best deal of the year. And things, of course, just got better from here. Here's what we've got loaded up. I've got Xbox, Xbox 360. The box is fairly big. Now, many of you did not miss this particular episode, but I took over three to 400 common PS2, PS3, Xbox, Xbox 360, just a whole bunch of common disc games into a local game store. And I went in with a mindset saying I was going to take any offer they were going to give to me, but of course I wasn't going to say that out loud. Really in retrospect, seeing what other people in the comments section said to me, and seeing exactly how much money I got for this. Christopher Credit, we're looking at a total of 64.16. Okay. And then cash wise, so that's gonna come out to 51.33. I got totally ripped off. Cause even on the low end, a lot of game stores should be offering you close to a dollar a piece. I got close to like 20 cents per game. And there were some really solid titles in there. So in the end, I definitely would call this one of my worst deals considering I just took way too low of an offer for it. And I was like, sounds good, thank you. Then I waited. Uh, let's do this! It's the one thing. The only thing that can stand in my way. No! <laughs> Waiting for an eternity for a text. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Number two comes from the same guy, 
This is when he decides to give me his entire childhood toy collection. And this is where we really uncovered how he didn't want any of this. His kids didn't want any of this. He's like, I need to get rid of this. I have no connection to it. I gave him more money from the first deal we had and then I tried to give him an insane amount of money for this one and he just wouldn't take it. I think in the end I gave him close to five, six hundred bucks. This was such an amazing score because some of these items ended up in my collection up here and others were such great resale items that I ended up going so far over what I paid for this that deals like this aren't going to happen. But it turns out if you keep digging, if you keep staying out there, these deals actually do happen. They happen so often that you'd be surprised. And I know again, I got a lot of hate for this episode saying you way underpaid him. People have to remember, I tried to pay him more. I, I tried, he just wasn't gonna take it and didn't want the money. I don't think money was an issue for this guy. He just wanted to, to go somewhere where he didn't have to take it to a donation center simply because I told him I wanted it. So with that said, this was my second best deal of 2021. My second worst deal actually comes from a collector. While I was in Arizona visiting family, I took an opportunity on a Saturday morning to go to a garage sale where the gentleman said, hey, by the way, I opened yesterday and basically sold most of my good stuff. And I was like, oh, that, that really sucks. But he did have some vintage Star Wars action figures and vehicles that he had up on a local market that he said, hey, if you wanna take all of this for this price, I'll give it to you right now. And I was trying to do some of the calculations in my head, and yes, I was making money on this deal, but what I've learned and how I've started to get more into selling retro toys, it's a slow market. It means that you have to be able to sell it at the right price to move it quick, and by adjusting my price down, I would be getting to a point where I'll probably just get my money back, which is eventually going to happen. Considering how much time, considering how much I paid for the lot, I'm probably going to end up losing money on this deal. Again, it goes down to making less than $5 an hour on the deal. If not, I'm actually paying to have bought this lot in the first place. Just because you wanna buy retro items, retro games or retro toys, don't do it just because the option is right there. Do the research, make sure it's worth it. In this case, I was just really excited and I walked away really just not making any money and spending over, I think, six or seven hundred dollars for the entire lot. But it is time to talk about the best pickup I had all year, which actually turned out to be so fantastic. This was the first deal I made from a YouTube subscriber, Julio, and his brother, of course, both of them great guys. I've ended up going back doing three or four total deals with both of them. And this particular deal had such a rare game inside that I didn't really know it. Neither did Julio. Both of us sort of had no idea. Now, after following all the hype with graded games and seeing what was going on with the market, I sent the game in at the exact right time. But my plan was to send this game into Heritage Auctions, which is where I was expecting to get probably the most money for it. Knowing what was going on with the company WADA and considering what I thought was going on with the graded game market in general, I just wanted to get money fast, as fast as I possibly could because I could, and I think all of you can see, that the market for those games has gone down considerably. So I timed it right, I put it up on eBay, and I think I only did a five day auction for it. And in the end, I sold the game for over $4,000. It was a tremendous sale. I was really happy with it. And considering how much I ended up paying initially, of course, I went back, I gave more money to Julio on the second deal we made and I couldn't have been happier. But it was one of those situations when a deal like that comes about, you gotta treat it special, you gotta treat it right, and I think I timed it right. I think the relationship I made with Julio was really strong, and of course, selling Super Mario for over $4,000, it turned out to be my best deal of 2021. So things look a little bit different from the last clip that you guys saw to where we're at right now. It's actually been a few days, and for some reason I either lost the media that spoke about the worst pickup I had all year, but it really doesn't matter because I've shifted my entire office around. And so the backdrop to where I'm sitting now is what you see behind me. Well, with that said, the worst deal of 2021 is probably going to go down as the worst deal I might ever have as a reseller because this deal cost me 10 
thousand dollars in lost revenue. Now when I look back on this deal and when I think about what I paid for it, I'm disappointed for a number of reasons, but the reason why I'm the most disappointed is because I actually went on camera, made a YouTube video talking about the card market probably late 2020 into early 2021, and I started discussing investments as if I have any idea what I'm talking about when it comes to investing in the sports card market. Now, in the last year, I've spent a lot of time watching YouTube videos, watching TikTok channels, watching a lot of people talk about different types of card investing. And one thing is for certain, I know absolutely nothing about what I'm talking about when it comes to sports or collectible cards. Nothing because those who actually do are the only ones who are probably making any money in this market. So back in early 2021, I actually at the height of the market went in and bought two cases of 1990 Fleer basketball, thinking that at the time when I bought them, we weren't really at the peak of the market. In fact, we were probably so far off that I thought I was gonna make at least $1,000 per case just by simply buying them, having them shipped to me, inspecting them, and then pretty much shipping it right off to the end buyer. Well, it turns out that that $10,000 in purchasing two cases is literally $10,000 totally lost. I'm trying to remember how many boxes are actually in each case, and I'm not sure if I remember off the top of my head, but regardless, I think the value of each case right now is somewhere between $1,400 to 1500 and that's if I sold it right now, which is pretty much at the lowest point of the market. That was $10,000 invested in 1990 Fleer basketball boxes, two of which you can kind of see back here that I bought separately, and I think I bought those for like 300 bucks a box. It's one of those moments I wish I could have back. I wish I'd never would have gone on camera and actually said, hey, if you're smart, you can invest in the card market. Well, yeah, no, don't, don't do that because it really wasn't just a $10,000 loss. I have Pokemon cards, Vivid Voltage. I think I have 10 boxes of that. I have some 1989 Fleer basketball. I've got two boxes of that. I've got 1986 baseball, 1989 upper deck baseball, 1991 Fleer Ultra Basketball Series 2 with the Shaq rookie cards. I've got four boxes of that. So in reality, it's more than a $10,000 loss. It's much more than that. But I really like to just relegate it to that 10,000 bucks because, you know, that's such a nice round number. But I think looking back right now, I try not to make any types of predictions when it comes to investing. In fact, I've changed a lot of the channel to try to pull out a lot of the discussion about here is how I'm a professional reseller. I'm not a professional reseller. I do reselling. I make money on reselling. But for me to try to put that advice out there and have someone else interpret it and lose money on something, I don't feel comfortable doing that. So I'd rather this be more entertaining for you guys to watch as a reseller. Enjoy the pickups, enjoy the nostalgia, the retro games, the retro toys, all the just the randomness that comes with my channel. And that $10,000 loss, I'll take it if it turns out that it's a learning experience for me and one that I can impart to you. Don't do what I did and don't go on camera suggesting you're an expert when you're not. So with that said, folks, my worst loss of 2021 was $10,000, all from one purchase. And that was most of today's episode, folks. Yes, my top five best pickups, my worst five pickups. Hopefully that was somewhat enjoyable. I know seeing someone's misery can be entertaining, and I hope seeing my $10,000 loss is both educational and somewhat laughable. Because I imagine some of you probably might have seen the signs early enough to say, why would anyone ever, ever do anything that negligent? It was bad. So let's stop for a moment and see where we landed on our goal of $60,000 in our profit and loss. I've got my trusty phone here. You guys don't see this part, I edit that out. We last left off with a profit of $38,272. My cost for those last 10 days was approximately $1,715. Amazon gave me a payment of $3,816. I thought that was going to be a little bit higher, but I'm happy with what I got. eBay paid me a total of $5,640. I was hoping again it was gonna be higher, but again, I can't complain considering where we're at in the year. That brings our 10 day profit to $7,741. And that brings our grand total, drum roll please.
$46,013, folks. Well short of my goal of $60,000, but you know what? I'm not disappointed whatsoever. I tried really hard and considering the amount of time that I have, have a day job, spend a lot of time with my family, $46,000 in profit for the second half of the year, and I'm not disappointed. I'm gonna take that money, roll that into the business. A lot of changes that are coming up, but I can't say that I'm disappointed. I'd be lying if I said so. $46,000, folks, not bad at all. But I just wanna end with a couple of quick notes. What is happening with the channel? What are we doing? Why is there so much delay? Part of the challenge of making YouTube videos is that YouTube videos take a lot of time and I do it all myself. I do all the editing, I do all the filming. From time to time I have a manual do some of the shots for me, but in general I would say 99% of what you see on my YouTube channel is me doing it by myself with my spare time. I just don't think that I could say that YouTube videos are going to replace my day job. They just won't. As much as I would love for that to be the case, they just won't. But that's not something that I regret or I'm disappointed by. I have to find the time. I wanna get content out there. But I've got a number of videos in the queue ready to go and we'll see how it goes over the next couple of months. I'm hoping to get at least one video out per week as opposed to one video maybe per month. Also, there is a new series that I am excited to talk about, but I can't talk about it yet because I think by at least teasing it, it's just gonna reveal too much and I'll be disappointed when I actually do the very big reveal. I think I've got a very big idea that will be awesome for the channel. It is surrounding retro nostalgia toys and games. I think it's coming at the right time. I think it's what this channel needs and hopefully it will give me the lift. And for those of you who are out there, if you don't mind sharing this video, if you don't mind giving me a thumbs up, if you don't mind becoming a subscriber, all of those things help out with the YouTube analytics. So thank you again if you've made it this far into the video. I appreciate it. Folks, there's a lot coming from Hunting with Tripler. I am not down and out yet. There is more to come. I hope your holidays were really well, and I hope 2022 so far has been solid for you. With that, I hope your sales this weekend are going to be great, and I hope if there are garage sales in your area that you have some awesome finds, even if there's estate sales in some of the colder climates. Take care, and of course, I will see you next time. Take care.